Welcome to the Bergstrom Air Conditioning Seminars. At Bergstrom, we're here to help you. We'll provide you with practical knowledge that leads to the best performance for your air conditioning systems. In this seminar, we'll show you the two types of air conditioning systems and how they operate. First, we're going through the heat transfer function of an air conditioning system. Heat transfer is important in both the expansion valve system and the orifice tube system. The second law of thermodynamic states, heat always moves in one direction, from hot to cold, until temperature becomes equal. This is the basis for the function of an air conditioning system. Here are some specifics and the process on how heat transfer takes place. On the low pressure side of the air conditioning system, heat stored in the vehicle cab air is attracted to the cool low pressure refrigerant. On the high pressure side of the air conditioning system, heat stored in the system refrigerant is transferred to the cooler outside ambient air temperature. This is the fundamental reason an air conditioning system works. Heat transfer. Collect it from one area and transfer it to another. Without this process taking place, the air conditioning will not work. There are two main types of air conditioning systems that are important to know and understand the expansion valve system and the orifice tube system. We're going to show you how these two different systems operate with a focus on refrigerant flow. Now, let's look at the details of refrigerant flow operation in both air conditioning systems. We'll start by going through refrigerant flow in expansion valve systems. Cool vapor is drawn into the compressor from the evaporator. As it passes through, it is compressed. During the compression process, the refrigerant changes pressure, temperature, and boiling point. The system pressure increases, and as it does, it also increases the temperature and boiling point of the refrigerant. These increases are very important. The refrigerant in the compressor remains a vapor. It's vapor in and vapor out of the compressor. Liquids cannot be compressed. Therefore, you never want liquid refrigerant to enter the compressor. Next, the refrigerant moves from the compressor to the condenser as hot, high-pressure vapor. The hot refrigerant vapor travels through the condenser tubes and heat is transferred from the refrigerant to the fins. Then, as the cool outside air flows past the fins, heat is transferred to the air. The vapor is cooled and condensed and turns into liquid. This is called change of state. In the condenser, this change of state allows the refrigerant to change from a vapor to a liquid by releasing heat to the ambient air. It releases the heat collected inside the vehicle cab. The process of change of state is very important in the air conditioning system because during this process is when heat is collected or released. Next, the refrigerant exits from the outlet port of the condenser as a hot high pressure liquid and goes through the high pressure tube to the inlet port of the receiver dryer. As the refrigerant passes through the receiver dryer, it is filtered, dried, and stored. The refrigerant exits the receiver dryer as a hot, high-pressure liquid. The refrigerant flows from the outlet of the receiver dryer into the inlet of the expansion valve. As the refrigerant passes through the expansion valve, it changes from a hot, high-pressure liquid to cold, low-pressure liquid. The reduction in temperature of the refrigerant as it passes through the expansion valve is the direct result of the system pressure drop caused by the restriction of refrigerant flow. The lower pressure also reduces the boiling point and temperature of the refrigerant. The result is the refrigerant exits the expansion valve as a cool low pressure liquid with a low boiling point. Next, the refrigerant enters the evaporator. As it flows through the evaporator, it changes from a cool low pressure liquid to a cool low pressure vapor. This is called change of state. In the evaporator change of state, the refrigerant boils to a vapor, capturing heat from the vehicle cab ambient air. 
The reason the refrigerant boils in the evaporator is because it is under low pressure. The low pressure allows the refrigerant to boil at a low temperature. Change of state in the evaporator is also very important in the air conditioning system because during this process, heat is collected from the air inside the vehicle cab. For systems with block type expansion valves, the refrigerant exits from the outlet port of the evaporator as a cool low pressure vapor refrigerant. It then re-enters the expansion valve as a cool low pressure vapor. It passes unrestricted through the outlet of the expansion valve as a cool low pressure vapor. It is then drawn back to the compressor through the hose as a cool low pressure vapor. That's how refrigerant flows through expansion valve air conditioning systems. Now let's take a look at refrigerant flow in orifice tube air conditioning systems. With orifice tube systems, the refrigerant flows through the compressor the same as the expansion valve system. Another important element of the refrigerant is that it is drawn into the compressor as a cool low pressure vapor. As it flows through the compressor, the refrigerant is compressed, increasing high side system pressure. This increase in high side system pressure also increases the temperature and boiling point of the refrigerant. The refrigerant exits from the discharge port of the compressor as a hot high pressure vapor refrigerant through the high pressure hose to the inlet port of the condenser. As it enters and flows through the condenser, it changes from a hot high pressure vapor to a hot high pressure liquid. This change of state allows the refrigerant to condense from a vapor to liquid, releasing heat energy to the ambient air. The refrigerant next flows from the outlet of the condenser as a hot high pressure liquid into the inlet of the orifice tube. As the refrigerant passes through the orifice tube, it changes from a hot high pressure liquid to cold low pressure liquid. The reduction in temperature of the refrigerant as it passes through the orifice tube is the direct result of the system pressure drop caused by the restriction of refrigerant flow. The lower pressure also reduces the boiling point of the refrigerant. The result? The refrigerant exits the orifice tube as a cool low pressure liquid with a low boiling point. Next, the refrigerant enters the evaporator as a cool low pressure liquid. As it flows through the evaporator, it changes from a cool low pressure liquid to a cool low pressure vapor. This change of state allows the refrigerant to boil to a vapor, capturing heat energy from the vehicle cab ambient air. The reason the refrigerant boils in the evaporator is because it is under low pressure. The low pressure allows the refrigerant to boil at a low temperature. The refrigerant then exits from the outlet port of the evaporator as a cool low pressure vapor and enters the accumulator as a cool low pressure vapor. The refrigerant exits from the outlet port of the accumulator as a cool low pressure vapor. It is then drawn back to the compressor as a cool low pressure vapor. You've now seen how the refrigerant flow in the two types of air conditioning systems, expansion valve system and orifice tube systems, operate. To learn more about both systems, be sure to watch our additional seminars, Air Conditioning System Components, Air Conditioning System Maintenance and Service, and Air Conditioning System Troubleshooting. They're very helpful in keeping your air conditioning systems running great. Thank you for your time. At Bergstrom, we're here for you.